The first album to emerge from the groundbreaking scene at New York CBGB's, Patti Smith's 1975 debut Horses was a monumental combination of symbolist poetry and snarling guitars, as well as a towering opening statement for someone who just a few years earlier wasn't even considered a musician. Beginning in the early 70s as a poet, actress, and critic, Smith worked her way into rock through spoken word, opening for the New York Dolls and developing a musical poetry act with guitarist and writer Lenny Kay. Evolving into a quintet and signing to Arista Records on Lou Reed's personal recommendation, Smith came away with a seven-album contract, $750,000, and perhaps most importantly, full creative control. Horses opens with its most infamous line, Smith singing, Jesus died for somebody's sins but not mine, to start a reimagined version of 1964's Gloria by Van Morrison's group Them. Repurposed from her early poem Oath, it teemed with the thrill of rebellion. Retitled Gloria in Excelsius Deo, it sets the tone for an album that fuses Smith's literary ambitions with her rock and roll passions. Showing off the adventurous musician she'd found to match her torrents of images, Smith conceived the song Birdland after reading A Book of Dreams an homage to controversial psychoanalysis Wilhelm Reich by his son Peter. As she fantasizes about Reich returning from the dead to pick up his son in a UFO, her band reels out nine minutes of escalating improvisation in keeping with the song's title, a reference to the storied New York jazz club where John Coltrane recorded one of his most famous live albums. Dreaming in animation, it's all but a split of skull. It's gonna come out like a black bouquet, shining like a fist that's gonna shoot my black, like, like Mohammed The longest track on Horses, at nearly nine and a half minutes, Land is actually three songs in one. Starting with a spoken intro and a chant of the album's title, the band moves into a swinging cover of Chris Kenner's early 60s soul tune and garage rock staple, Land of a Thousand Dances, and ends with nine vocal tracks mixed together by Smith herself. A spirited collage she later admitted frightened her. Based on a dream about the death of Jimi Hendrix, whose Electric Lady Studios sat just blocks from Smith's own home and where the band was then recording horses. Land goes in so many different directions, it's like a mini-album of its own. The tension that runs through horses came in part from Smith's choice for producer, former Velvet Underground member John Cale, Kale drove the group to both tighten and expand their songs, creating a contentious but productive dynamic with the strong-willed Smith. I went to pick out an expensive watercolor painting, she said of recruiting Kale, and instead I got a mirror. Horse's closer, Elegy, was recorded on September 18, 1975, the fifth anniversary of Hendrix's passing. Smith said the song was about those we had lost, were losing, and would ultimately lose. There must be something I can dream tonight The air is filled with the moves of you Her obsession with death on horses apparently took a toll. By the end of the sessions, she had shrunk to a mere 93 pounds. But horses is even more about triumph and the glory of words and music capturing pure emotions and unfiltered reality. The album's immediate success, selling 200,000 copies within a year and cracking the top 50, was surpassed by its lasting influence. Beloved by a generation of indie artists like Michael Stipe, Sonic Youth, Cat Power, and PJ Harvey, among many others, as well as newer stars like Lord, who declared, there's no better music idol for young women. Horses was released on December 13, 1975, with a defiantly unglamorous cover portrait by Smith's longtime companion Robert Maplethorpe, a photo which enraged Arista Records head Clive Davis. But Smith refused to let his label retouch it, claiming it would be akin to having plastic surgery. It is that love of raw reality that courses through the stripped-down music of horses, a bracing expression of what Smith described as three chords merged with the power of the word. Horses remains a tense and mystically powerful mix of mythical poetry rock history, and pre-punk simplicity. <laughs> 